Hey everyone, welcome to the first video of section 7.9. So 7.9, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and instead of solving homogeneous problems, we're going to start solving non-homogeneous problems. So up to this point, everything we've done so far has been homogeneous problems, where this g, so you have x prime equals ax plus g, this g has been zero for the entire chapter so far. Now we're going to get back to looking at how we can solve non-homogeneous problems um, in this context. We've saved it for a while because it's harder. It's a lot more difficult to do this. Um, but a lot of the methods we did before will still work. So we'll still see undetermined coefficients. We'll see variation of parameters. That's going to come in a later video. For this video, we're going to start with a pretty simple example where you have a translation. Um, and that's the only thing that's different about the problem. So this is going to be something where you'll see in like tank problems. If you look back at the tank problem from way, way back at the beginning of this chapter, it follows this form where there's a translation involved. And that's the only difference it is from being homogeneous. So we'll talk about how we can solve those problems and do a quick example of that just so you see what all that looks like. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. So non-homogeneous systems. Case number one is just translation. Now what I mean by translation is that I have x prime equals ax plus g. Now a can depend on t if it wants, but g is a constant vector. And again here we're going to assume the determinant of a is non-zero, just for convenience sake. So our system's almost homogeneous. It's homogeneous up to this little shift of just a plus something at the very end. That's a constant vector that doesn't depend on t. So how can we solve this problem? Well, we're going to use a little bit of a change of variables type thing that we've done before to do this. So because determinant of a is not 0, we can solve a times some vector b equals g for b. So this will be a system of equations you can solve by hand. Solve for the vector b such that a times b equals g. And then what I want to do is I want to make the substitution x equals y minus b. So I want to plug in for x, I want to plug in y minus this vector b we found before. Because a is invertible, we can find this and you can just solve the system to get there. So I want to plug that into my equation. So if I plug that into my equation, what do I get? Well, I get my left-hand side is y minus b prime. I'm plugging in y minus b for x in the first equation up here. So I get y minus b prime equals a times y minus b plus g. But now b is a constant vector, right? Because g is constant, so is b. So its derivative is 0. So the right, left-hand side just becomes a y prime. And this equals a y minus a b, because matrix multiplication is linear, plus g. But remember, a b equals g. So this term is 0, which means I'm back to solving y prime equals a y which that's a homogeneous equation. So all the tricks we've had so far for all of chapter seven will tell us how to solve this. And then x equals y minus b gives our solution x. So what really is going on here? Well, we know for y prime equals a y, this is a homogeneous equation, but since a is invertible, or the term a is non-zero, this has zero as the only critical point. And it has a certain form, so it's a source, or it's a nodal sink, or it's a saddle point, whatever it is. But 0 is the only critical point. If I do x equals y minus b, what this means here is that now x has negative b as a critical point. So basically all I'm doing is I'm taking the, the phase portrait for y around 0 and shifting it down to minus b. So same phase portrait drawn around minus b instead of zero. So if, if the g vector is a constant vector, it's, it's just a translation, it's just a shift. So it puts the equilibrium point somewhere else instead of being at zero. And then it does its normal thing around there, whatever it happens to do based on the problem as it's stated. So let's do a quick example of this just to show you how all this works out, because this is a pretty quick one to handle. So the example is find the general solution to x prime equals 5 minus 1, 2, 2, x plus 1, 1. So our first step we have to find is we have to find this vector b to undo the translation. So I need to solve 5 minus 1, 2, 2, 
times b1, b2 equals 1, 1. So this gives me 5b1 minus b2 equals 1, 2b1 plus 2b2 equals 1. And if you solve this out, I can do all the work. Then we get b1 is a quarter and b2 is a quarter. So then I want to set y equal to x plus 1 fourth, 1 fourth, i.e. x equals y minus a fourth a fourth. And if I plug this in, I will see that y minus a fourth, one fourth, one fourth prime equals five minus one, two, two, y minus one fourth, one fourth, plus the vector one, one. And then the root of here is zero, so I just end up with a y prime equals 5 minus 1, 2, 2, y, and then these two terms went up canceling like they did before. So then this guy is my function for y, and we've done this in the last video. The general solution to this, which I'm not going to work out again, you can do the details on this yourself, is y of t is c1 times 1, 2, e to the 3t, plus c2 times 1, 1, e to the 4t. So then what is x? then x of t is going to be c1 times 1, 2, e to the 3t, plus c2 times 1, 1, e to the 4t, minus 1 fourth, 1 fourth. So what is this? This is an unstable node centered at negative 1 fourth, 1 fourth. So for your normal stable, unstable node, well, I've got eigenvectors like here and here. It's centered at zero, and you've got curves that sort of go like this and go like this, that kind of thing. Now, instead, they're just centered off here. And my curves do the same sorts of things in this area here. It's just now off-centered. It's, it's an unstable node, but it's shifted. All right, so there's the whole point there, that if I just have a translation, I can undo the translation and just get a shifted face portrait, where instead of having it where it's centered at zero, it's dragged away and centered somewhere else. And those face portraits aren't exactly correct. You should definitely look back at the ones you did before in earlier chapter seven to make sure you get those right. But that's it for this video. Just a simple example of a non homogeneous we can solve fairly easily just by doing a translation. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.